but of incredible darkness and fear. What is the show called? It has been called many different names by many different cultures. Oh, I know. It's called Lost in Space. Saturday at 8, 7 central on MeTV. Look at that. Isn't that a great layout? You son of a gun. This campaign is no good. No good! Darren and Larry, the original Mad Men on Bewitched. Hi, I'm John Malice, and welcome to this edition live on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this uh, Thursday morning. Glad to have you along. It's Ask an Expert Day. Two attorneys, two very well-known attorneys right here in the Central Valley. Glad to have them along in the studio. You're watching us live on Comcast, channel 187, 43.6. The number, 436-ME-TV, hit option 11. Back in a moment. <laughs> It is Ask an Expert Day here on Connect With Me, but uh, if you call in, um, you know, you can ask pretty much any question within reason, of course. 436 Me TV Option 11. Don't wade through the message. Just hit Option 11 ASAP. And please don't forget, turn down the sound on your television because we're going to get all kinds of feedback. We won't be able to hear you. So it's best for you and also best for us here live on the set. So today I'm talking to two attorneys. And, you know, I don't know what goes through your mind when you think of an attorney or attorneys or maybe a law firm. But these two gentlemen that are in the studio today, I know personally, and I'm going to give my personal opinion now. I've worked with them. They are as honest as the day is long. Let's put the first graphic up on the screen. Talking about Warren Pabujan, the one and only. He's known as a pit bull in the courtroom, a man who never gives up. No matter the case, he surrounds himself with all sorts of people that have knowledge. He does his homework from dawn until dusk. Pabujan, born and raised in Fresno, graduated from Fresno State, San Joaquin College of Law. He is known as a super lawyer. I'll ask him what that means. Also, Jason Bell, his partner. Uh, Jason, also a super lawyer. He, too, graduated from Fresno State and San Joaquin College of Law. The two of them are partners, and let's take a look at some of the recent cases. Of course, Stacey Johnson Klein, the Seth Ireland case, the beating case, tragic story. The Malos, yes, my daughter, versus uh, Fresno County Fair. Clovis Unified Molestation Case, that's just some of the cases. If you go to their website, you can see all the cases that they have obviously uh, been dealing with the past uh, few years. Now, recently, in the last couple of years, Warren spoke to some students at San Joaquin College of Law talking about one issue, and that's a very important issue. It's called civility in the courtroom. Because I got to tell you, in dealing with lawyers, not within Fresno County, Fresno County and the San Joaquin Valley, I, I still believe it's very congenial how we practice law. But you, you'll start practicing law when you get out and get your bar ticket with lawyers in LA and San Francisco. And some of these different cities and states have a different mentality on how to practice law. And that's why what a boater comes into is say, look, we've got to be civil amongst each other. We cannot fight in these depositions because when you start fighting amongst each other, and you know, the way it's set up, it's a, we call it an adversarial situation. So you're automatically graduating from law school thinking that it's, and it is, adversarial. And adversarial means fighting, bulldog, hard-nosing things. And there is a time and a place for that, but there's also a time and a place for the civility part of it. Live in our studio now is Warren Pabujan, the one and only, and his partner Jason Bell. They are here to take your phone calls, 436 Me TV Option 11. We're also going to talk about the San Joaquin College of Law. We'll also talk about how they got started, some of the cases that they're involved in right now, uh, maybe limited on some of the information that uh, they can give on a current case. But nonetheless, we're here, 436 Me TV Option 11, back with our Ask an Expert Day here on Connect With Me in just a moment. 
Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency Cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool Cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. The two attorneys are here. They're good friends and um, a little partial, of course, uh, and I don't mind giving my opinion on this show once in a blue moon. Anyway, glad to welcome in Warren Pabujan. Good to see you, Warren. How are nice you? Nice seeing you, John. How are you? Thanks for taking the time. I know you're busy. Hi, Jason, John. good to see you. Nice to see you, too. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Glad Dodgers to be here. first place. Yeah, and where are those Giants, by the way? <laughs> they, second? No, they're in third. they got to be in third. Um, Last. Oh, that's <laughs> what I thought. Anyway, we'll... we'll uh, it's been a long awaited. You know, the, the viewers have a question before I have a question. Let's let's see what this is all about. Good morning. You're on with uh, Warren and Jason. What's your question? Hello, you there? Hello. Yeah, hi. Quickly, you're on the air. Quick, what's your question? Uh, yes, I have a question. It's regarding, again, the legal advice. It's, I have an invention. Is there any way um, Mr. Pabujan can give me some kind of a advice on what to do locally rather than going outside? So, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you had an invention. Yes. Yeah, that that would be out of my area. I, I'm I'm mainly personal injury. You'd have to probably seek a patent attorney uh, and something but like that. Do you know any of any attorneys that we can basically trust in locally? Yeah. Well, you could probably call the show afterwards, and I'll leave some names with you. Okay, I really appreciate it. I'm really proud of you. I'm yeah. an Armenian, too. Yeah, well, thank you very much, and thanks for calling. <laughs> but call in later, and we'll give you a name. Legal advice already. We haven't just begun. We're charged yeah. by the hour. Yeah, that's right. All right, <laughs> San Joaquin College of Law, you graduated from there. You also did. You spoke to the students there, Warren. You were talking about, and I want you both to weigh in on this, because when they think of Warren and perhaps Jason Bell, they think of these two guys that are, you know, they, they are pit bulls in the courtroom, but you were talking about civility. Can you expand on that? Uh, yeah, the talk that I gave to the law school was basically about civility, and it that uh, uh, the genesis of that started because of an organization called the American Board of Trial Advocates, and it's called ABOTA. And, a, and ABOTA is a national civil trial organization uh, that started uh, over 50 years ago in the United States, and each uh, county and each state across the United States has chapters and to get in you have to be voted by your peers you have to have impeccable integrity you can't have a blemish on your on your record and um, mainly the qualifications to get in well you usually have to be practicing at least 10 years but the main qualification is it's changed a little bit recently but 20 jury trials to verdict that may not seem a lot but that means you have to try at least two civil cases a year for 10 years but you have to have 20 verdicts to trial, civil cases, and then you have to get voted on yeah. amongst your peers. Jason, when you take a take a case, especially like, you know, I, I'm thinking of the Seth Ireland case right now. It's such a tragic story. How in your own mind do you approach this in a civil way? Just, just trying to control your outrage about what happened. Well, it, it's tough, John. I mean, it, you, you feel for these people. I mean, it, you know, a lot of these times, we haven't gone through these experiences, and it, it's it's tough talking to these people uh, that go through these tragic things. But you know, it's it, it it's a it's a job, and 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 you got a job to do, and and uh, you know you, you you go forward with it. Is it difficult to keep your emotions out of it and and stay civil if you get into a settlement situation or even in court? Well, you know, what you try to do is you just try to let the client know that you've got it covered, that you're going to handle it. You have to instill confidence uh, so the client feels that you're going to take care of it. And that's just the process you have to go through. And a lot of people come to us with terrible tragedies. And you can never um, understand it because some of these tragedies are terrible. You just have to have some empathy and do the best you can for them. But I'm talking about, you know, like the other side. You're you're going against the other side. How do you stay civil in that situation? Oh, well, that's pretty easy. On, on, on You know, most of the lawyers in town have a lot of respect for each other. 
And it, there's always moments where people get heated in a courtroom, and, and that's just natural. Yeah. But um, but you've got to learn that you can fight in a courtroom and argue in a deposition and walk out afterwards and shake each other's hand and move forward. And, and especially in our community, it's... It, it, it's pretty majority, civil. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it's not wild and crazy. It's not like the Jerry Springer show or something. No, 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 John. Yeah. And, and in fact, I mean, it, 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 it helps the case along if you're getting yeah. along with the other attorney. Yeah. I mean, if you're bickering and fighting the whole time, you lose sight of, of, of what the goal is. You also, in, in your speech to San Joaquin College of Law, you talked about uh, tort reform, of course. That's the Seventh Amendment. Expand on that a little bit. Well, the, the tort reform has been loosely used throughout the, the country in the last, I don't know, eight to ten years. But I don't think people fully understand how devastating tort reform could be to somebody. In California, if you were to sue a doctor or a hospital or any type of health care provider, there is a cap of $250,000. And most people come to our office and don't understand that. That's so, in place now? That's in place now. And it was in place in 1974. Hmm. And so, for instance, if I give you an example, if uh, a doctor by accident uh, kills somebody on the operating table or amputates the wrong arm, the most you'll ever get your heirs, your family, is $250,000 in pain and suffering. That cap was in place to protect doctors and health care providers from leaving the state of California for runaway lawsuits. California has the lowest cap, one of the lowest cap, if not the lowest cap in the entire United States. So that cap needs to be removed. It needs to go up. You know, and there needs to be, you know, maybe. What, what should it be, do you think? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I'd like to see it at a million dollars. But if you think about it, a young father of, that's 27 years old that is killed by malpractice cannot uh, get more than $250,000. In fact, we, we tell people all the time, they come in and they say, well, you know, my husband was killed because of medical malpractice. And, yeah. and I've got four kids. Well, it's $250,000. We had a small child who had both of her legs amputated because of. Uh, medical malpractice, a three-year-old above the knees, and it was a 250. Now you're able to get the medical bills, and you're able to get future wage loss, but the pain and suffering is 250. Yeah. Before we go to break, what'd you learn at San Joaquin College of Law? We had Jan Pearson on here not too long ago. She's the dean over there. Great right. guest, uh, great lady. Uh, w would you recommend people go there? A absolutely, John. I mean, it's a great, it's a great school. It's a great thing for for this town. I mean, it, you, they 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 teach you what you need to learn to pass the bar, and they also get you connected with the community too. So you guys are proof. You you don't have to go well, to Harvard to be a successful attorney. I mean, San Joaquin College of Law is very respected around the state. I'm sure. San Joaquin has produced an enormous amount of judges, great lawyers. You get a great education. And uh, it's been around for over 40 years. So um, people should not underestimate the quality of education you can receive from San Joaquin College. And you law. two still give back to the college, right? I mean, you're still over there giving speeches and, and whatnot. Yeah, we donate financially. We try to support the school with our presence. And, uh, and they've been very good to us, our law firm. So we're very happy with San Joaquin. Okay, talking to Warren Pabujan and Jason Bell. And they are partners in their law firm. We're going to continue here on Connect With Me. Uh, Comcast Channel 187 Live, uh, 436 MeTV, hit option 11. Back in a moment. Weeknights on MeTV. <laughs> Who loves you, baby? You shouldn't ask. It's Kojak. Well, it sounds like music to my ear. On MeTV. Look at me. Why do we love him? Maybe it's the way I call my hair. Or maybe it's his trusty right-hand man. Come on, boys. Crocker! 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 Kojak! <laughs> Well, I, I just wanted to hear how it sounded. Telly Savalas is Kojak. Story of my life, baby. Weeknights at 12.30, 11.30 Central on MeTV. Who loves you? We're talking to Warren Pabujan and Jason Bell. Of course, they're like, and the official name of your law firm is, so I don't mess it up. <laughs> it's, it's a Baradat and Pabujan. Okay, and you've been practicing law for uh, how long now, Warren? Oh, it's going on about 28 years. 28 years? Where's the time gone? <laughs> I don't know. It's a blink. It's pretty quick. It's going by pretty quick. How'd you start with Warren? Uh, you know what, John? I started out as a, as a runner. I started, I was at Fresno State, and uh, I needed a job. <laughs> and... Uh, it just so, progressed. So he hired you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what does a runner do at a law firm? I go and file documents at court. <laughs> we do filing. I mean, it, I started at the bottom, 
You were, were you were going to law school at the time? No, or? no, I was at Fresno State. Oh, you were. Oh, you were yeah. even in law school. No, no. <laughs> I, 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 Let's get, I didn't hire him. I needed. To. Uh, <laughs> but then I adopted him afterwards. <laughs> but he worked at a law firm that we were at. Uh, oh, okay. I followed him yeah. along his way. Yeah. So. Oh, really? So you were kind of a tag along. Yeah, yeah. 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 And is he still tagging along? No, no. He's got <laughs> he's, he's got his own wings. Trust me. Oh man, if you were to give advice to someone. Uh, I was never a good student in school, and I hate to admit that. Don't let my kids hear that. <laughs> but my brother was the smart one in the family. He went to McGeorge Law School. Um, what does it take to be an attorney in now, in this day and age, a, a successful attorney? Well, long hours. You're just going to have to accept working long hours. Um, any attorney in town will tell you that uh, it's going to take a lot of dedication. You know, law school is one part of it, and law school is very, very hard. I found that it was much harder than going to undergrad just because the complexity of the information and the, um, the hours. But once you got out, it's a lot of hard work. Honesty. And i got to say this to the audience. I know I've worked with you two on my daughter's case. Uh, you two guys are as honest as the day is long. Is that your number one goal is to be honest and fair with everybody? You treat people the way you want to be treated. If you do that, the work will come in any industry that you do. And, and you know, there's good lawyers and there's bad lawyers. There's great doctors and there's not so good doctors. There's good TV hosts. There's yeah, bad, bad TV ones. hosts, absolutely. John, all you have is your name in this community. Yeah. I mean, if you lose your name or you lose your reputation, or for honesty, it's gone. It's you can't gone. get it back. Yeah. Another phone call. Good morning. You're on with uh, Jason and Warren. How are you? And what's your question? My question is regarding the repeal of tort reform. A, in the case of a settlement, of course, capped at 250, but uh, medical and uh, loss of wages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. My question is, is uh, uh, and total, uh, is, is a lawyer's fee? going to come out of that 250 cap or is it going to come out across the board on all the settlements including medical loss of wages etc that was one of my questions and my second question um the the defamed fire chief in city of fresno if he came to your office today warren and <laughs> wanted to sue for wrongful termination and do you think he could make a case but he, he resigned though, you? didn't he yeah, I'll, I'll start off with the fire chief. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I've seen what I've seen on the news, and, um, you know, I'd have to probably talk to him, at least give him the opportunity to tell me uh, why. Uh, but in, in California, and you may know this, that truth is a defense to any defamation. So, And he's somewhat of a public figure in the role he plays as the chief of police. So, you know, it would be a difficult case. I'm not saying he doesn't have one, but it would be a difficult case. Why? Well, because truth is a defense. If, if Meaning that if there was an altercation and that got publicized, if there wasn't an altercation, then, you know, then that's different. But, when, so for instance, you're on TV, you make, um, somebody makes accusations against you. If they're well, I true, had that happen, actually, well, as you may know. Yeah, well, if they're true. <laughs> I know you didn't then, want to bring it up. Yeah, I, I wasn't <laughs> trying to. But if it's true, then, you know, you don't really have a defamation claim because truth is an absolute defense to a defamation okay. claim. So that would be one thing you'd want to look at. In regard to the tort reform, that's a good question you raise. Yes, the attorney's fees come out of the 250. Really? And to what is it, like 10 percent, 15? Well, it's the only time that a lawyer is governed by the state of California as to what you can charge. There's a scale, a maximum scale, and it starts off at 40 percent for the first fifty thousand dollars and then it goes to 33 and a third percent for the next 50 you recover for the client right. then it drops down to 25 percent then it drops down to 15 percent let me tell you what that does the bigger medical malpractice cases where child or children are injured through birth and it could be millions of dollars you could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars as a lawyer hiring medical experts to defend these cases and sometimes it's very hard medical malpractice cases to recover because the doctor has a lot of sympathy, understandably. So it, it, it is, you know, it's, it's not real cost effective sometimes and it gets costly. Yeah. So it is, to answer the caller's question, yeah, you, if, if you recover $500,000 for a client with the medical bills and the cap, it probably will run you, you it's probably around 18 or 19 percent is yeah. the fee. That almost doesn't seem fair because the state's controlling you. Right. Well, if you they control how much you can make. Oh, yeah, it's, and it's in a statute. And the, and the problem with the medical malpractice is, is that in the recovery of it, you could have $100,000 in a case 
And these smaller medical malpractice cases, you just can't take them because you need a doctor to testify. And that could run you anywhere from ten to thirty thousand dollars to hire a doctor just to talk about a hundred thousand. So at the end of case. the day, what are you left with? Exactly, and that's why <laughs> in, in Cali you know in California there is the only way you're going to get attorneys' fees and costs in a case is by right. contract or agreement. And so in these cases, the 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 injured person is bearing these and fees the and costs. And the question you have to ask is, okay, forget about the attorneys' fees. What's the the client going to be left with? Not right. much. Oh no! It's that's not much. That's and, the, and so and both parties are kind of right. getting the shaft. Well, a that's bit. the problem. I mean, the problem is that if a client comes to you and says, "This, I had these needless surgeries," and it's a two hundred thousand dollar case, by the time you take the fees out and pay the cost, the cost could be fifty to sixty thousand dollars. And the client's ruined for life. Well, and if I came to a certain extent, I mean, could be, could yeah. be. Could well, be and if I came that. to you and said, you know, I'll I'll do my time for free or on a percentage, but you put fifty thousand dollars into a case, it's only worth one hundred and fifty, and there's less than a fifty percent chance you're going to win. You wouldn't want to invest in the case. Quickly before we go to break, only got a couple of seconds here. Would you? Would you, have you ever worked cases where you've done it for free and oh, yes. you've, you've donated your time and money? We've and it's waived, cost you thousands. We've waived. Mm -hmm. We've waived our fee in tragic cases where there's limited uh, insurance. My man. partner Barrett yeah. and I, I can't tell you on how many cases we've waived our fee when we found out there wasn't much insurance and that, you know. But that's just a part of it. I mean, we're fortunate enough. We've done well and we can do that. So I mean, I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back, but that's some of the things you got to do and give back to the community, and we do that in those kind of ways. Right. All right, talking to Warren Pabujan, Jason Bell, and they are partners in a law firm. We're back in just a moment here on Connect With Me, 436 Me TV Option 11. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer, the first pulsator agitator washer, and now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Got to put our disclaimer up just real quick. Put it up on the screen quickly there, Ara. I uh, just want to mention that uh, Warren and Jason did not pay us to come on the show. We did not pay them. They cam came here of their own free will. We put that up uh, most uh, every time we have an Ask the Expert Day uh, here or a business segment. We just want you, the viewer at home, to know that this is on the up and up. Okay, let me ask you real quick here before we run out of time, a couple of these cases, and I know you can't expand too much because it's kind of ongoing. It's, I, I, I don't know where this case stands, so I shouldn't say. Put the picture up on the screen. Donovan Maldonado, of course, uh, the little boy very tragically killed in an accident uh, last year by, allegedly so, by Lauren LeBeau. Now, he took a plea deal. I believe he got 12 years. Is that correct? He well, got 12 years? I, I don't think he's sentenced yet. I think the, the, range gonna, is, or, the range is somewhere between 9 and 12 years. 9 and 12 years. Take a look at the intersection where all this happened. That's the intersection right there. Mm -hmm. And um, just a tragic case, guys. Now, you, uh, you two are suing the city of Fresno, is that correct, or Lauren LeBeau? Both. Both. Okay. And where does the case stand, if you could tell us? Well, the judge is got, has to make some rulings in the case to determine if we're going to move forward. Once the judge makes certain rulings on the case, we can move forward. Is it in the appeals process no, now? It's or no, it's, a, it's at the Superior Court level, and a Superior Court okay. judge is reviewing the case right now. So he, we can't really comment on it. But He hasn't made a decision yet? Uh, not really. Okay, go through some of these cases. Stacy Johnson Klein, let's roll the videotape. Well, you can look at it here or up here. Uh, big case. Is this the one case that got your name out there, Warren? Well, I mean, I, um, I think my name, I don't know if it was out there, but I was doing a lot of plaintiff's work and getting results. But obviously this case... But I case, mean, vaulted your name in terms of recognition to the top. Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. The coverage yeah. on that was kind of uh, crazy for the for the two and a half months of the trial that was going on. Yeah. Jason, what's your <laughs> thoughts about what happened in this client? Uh, was this was all about Title IX, basically. I mean, they right. fired her because she wanted equal opportunity for female athletes. And they what accusations did they make against her? That she stole money, as I recall, right. and she was took taking... Vicodin. Yeah, took Vicodin. Yeah. And that's um, just, that just goes to show you don't get the true full story until right. it's litigated in court. 
and the truth came out in court. It yeah, was, some say, some say not, but <laughs> we say was, yes. So, it was you know. pretty embarrassing for Fresno State, though, and well, uh, they, you two graduated from there. Yeah, yeah. that was, that was kind of yeah. hard, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I had to give up my red seats. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know, I think the university has moved forward, and I, I think that the Fresno State's a great university. I think that right now they're in a good place, and they've got a good football program, and uh, it's, a, it's, it's a great school. It's just... You know, Academically, that, it's a great school. Yes. Right. Everywhere I go, just about everywhere, I don't want to exaggerate, but most places I go, people see me and they say, how's your daughter doing? Let's put the video up on the screen. Of course, she got sick at the petting zoo uh, at the Fresno County Fair back in 2005. And yeah, I'm a little partial to these guys because they handled the case. Uh, so uh, we went in. Uh, there were no washing stations, no, uh, no anything to come out there and sanitize your hands. And so this is what happened. Let's put up the picture of my daughter there real quick. She's doing much better now. She's in the swimming pool there <laughs> having a good time when her brother is not bugging her. But uh, I, now let me ask you something. I don't know if I've asked you this before about you know my daughter Angela why did you decide to take this case there was no guarantee that that you were gonna win this Jason why don't yeah. you pick it up well it's the same thing John I mean it, you, this was this was a, a, a it needed to be the story needed to be told I mean there would there there needs to bring change a lot of a lot of litigation is about bringing change and making things better and and you don't want to have history repeat itself and as of now there's no petting zoo at the fair is there that's thanks to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> you can blame me. I, 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 get that, I get that blamed a little bit on me. But uh, What did you see in her case that you thought, hey, this is an injustice? Well, I mean, um, it, I just thought it was not obvious, but there was a strong link that the petting zoo uh, and your daughter's um, uh, E. coli uh, were related. And so, and, and I think this is kind of everybody, it's a misnomer. People don't wash their hands, and, and not, this wasn't in your case, but people don't wash their hands when they pet farm animals, and they just need to know that when you're very young and very old, it could be deadly. For people our age or middle-aged folks, you get the E. coli, e. coli bacteria, and you, can, you, know, you might have some upset stomach for a while, but for the very young and very old, it could be deadly. And it needed to be told, like Jason said. This is a case that really bothered me, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I tossed and turned at night when I saw this on the news, and it just bothered the living daylights out of me. The Seth Ireland case, let's put that up on the screen there. The videotape of Seth Ireland. You can explain it. Uh, he was beaten to death by his mother's boyfriend, as I recall. Yes. You got You got some money out of this yeah. one for the family. Um, uh, there were two boys. Um, there was Seth, who was beaten, and his brother, Javon, who watched it. And that's the verdict mm. reflects those that amount. But what happened was the biological father um, uh, w we represented ended up suing um, the county of Fresno CPS along with the person that beat his son to death and the claim was that the county failed to protect the boy through CPS by not going to the house enough. The county disputed that and that's why we had a trial. And we're looking at pictures of Seth Ireland right now. Yeah, Just a very tragic. sad story. It's hard to look at. I'm sure you had a lot of sleepless nights too, both of you uh, going that, through that case. That case, uh, you know, is in my top five of sleepless nights. Uh, Seth Ireland was a bright, young, beautiful boy. He, did, he had good grades. His teachers loved him, and he just didn't need to die. It was a terrible tragedy. Someone who's looking to get into the law arena, they might be looking at this interview right now, and, and they're, they're wondering, and we have a minute left, uh, we're gonna get cut off. What's the criteria for taking a case in your situation? You look at every case, what's the criteria? You have to, first of all, you have to believe that the law has been violated. And if it's violated, can you prove it? And you, you have to look at it like a business. Because what I told you earlier, that if I told you we're going to invest your money, give me $10,000, you're going to want to know if I give you this $10,000, what's the likelihood of winning? So you look at the likelihood of winning. And sometimes you look to see if it's going to make social change or reform. And you just kind of factor all that in. Yeah, Jason, yeah. quick, got thirty seconds. Abs absolutely, same thing, and and it's and and uh, it's 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 about making things right. And quickly, in ten seconds, are you guys literally bombarded every day from people that coming to you with these types of cases? 
Well, you know, I don't know if we're bombarded, but we're selective in what we're taking because right. you don't want to mislead anybody to think they have a case. And you don't want to be spread too thin, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got to go or they're going to cut me off. Warren, it's good to see you. Good seeing you. You know what I think of you. You're a good guy. You too, Jason. You know what I think of you. Thanks for Hey, come back again, guys. Anytime. Got time. Absolutely. Love All to. All right. You got to have your own show on here sometime. <laughs> anyway, Warren Pabujan, Jason Bell, our guest here on Connect With Me. We're going to be back tomorrow with a special program. It's on the Oakland A's. How is this team in first place in the AL West? I'll never know. See you tomorrow. After practicing law, Raymond Burr fought crime. You have the right to an attorney. His name is Ironside. Ain't it the truth? Now on Xfinity 187.